Okay, so you smart people all corrected me. What the right I have set my scale to ounces Troy. Ben, can you put that on top of this? Good boy. Look at that. Okay, so there you go, guys. He is good at that. What does that say? It rocked. What is that? It rocked. That's pretty cool, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you. fairly important to our lifestyle is rice. We eat a pretty decent chunk of rice and there's a, a specific brand that we like that goes with the food we eat. And if we don't have it, things get weird. Go. Good thing we have a... Go. What? Go. What? Go. Okay. Hey, do you want to eat Good thing coffee. we have a Ranch 99. What is it? Are those crabs? Crabs and lobster? Scary? Okay, let's go. This is the rice we got. Should we get a couple bags? Why? We have a bag of crappy rice at home. All right. Daddy? Yeah? Ice. Oh, you want some ice? Yeah. Okay, we're not gonna get ice right now. Okay, here's my favorite aisle in the whole, uh, this whole place is the snack not aisle. Good. Snacks? Not you want some snacks? Yeah. Okay, let's go up and down until we find the ones we want, okay? We gotta look at all of them so we don't miss anything, okay? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but look at all the rest of them. We gotta see them all. So we like the stuff that are in little individual packages so we don't have to eat the whole thing. These are good. Yeah, Ben, you will be the first person to get these. Don't worry. You don't even know what this is. That is gross. You don't want that. That. That's squid. I grew up with this stuff. What? Yeah. This is, was like one of my grandpa's Mommy, favorites. Get that one instead. Uh, Just make him. Mommy, okay, here, me. this one. This one's better, Ben. Me. We're going to have so much curry tonight. It's not even going to be funny. And it's Vietnamese style curry, so it's like, yeah, yes. Which we may eat with bread. So my statement about rice might be incorrect. Leave a comment if you want some uh, carp crackers. Carp chips. I promise I'll send them out. I don't know. This doesn't seem like something the municipal city power guys should be doing. Every one of these trees has a power box. That's got the same thing. So they can power these Christmas lights. Yeah, they really don't care. It's dumb. Oh man. Is that fun, Ben? Got my delicious rice crackers here. These are so good. Mmm. Look at that. Okay. So, last week, I made a call to ask some questions. I only got two, which is fine, on that one video. And by the way, you can always ask me on my Facebook page or on my Twitter if you have any questions, whatever. And we'll, we'll just blow right through them. Uh, so the first one, just Dano was talking to me about uh, silver shares, and he said, I don't know if he specifically wanted it to be discussed on this video, but it doesn't really matter. I'm going to talk about it anyway, because it's kind of an open book. I don't have any problem talking to you about what I did and, and what my thoughts are on it, and we'll just, we'll just treat it like that, and feel free to comment and ask me further questions on what I'm saying. It's open book. Anything goes pretty much. If I'm putting it on the video, it means I want you to watch it, so 
hit me up with whatever you want to say. Uh, how much over spot was I on Silver Eagles? So I didn't buy Silver Eagles. I bought that big old hunk, but this video was before I actually had the silver that you saw in the video. I paid $180 for the 10 ounces. So if spot was at $15 at that particular time, that would have been $3 over spot. It was free shipping. That is a bit of a premium. I paid probably more than you could dicker if you found somebody that had silver. And as just Dan probably knows, it's very hard right now to find silver in stock in store, like brick and mortar store. You almost have to go online to do it. So the only way you're gonna save on the back end is, is through shipping. So let me, let me tell you exactly who I bought it from. I bought through JM Bullion. You can Google that if you're interested. JM Bullion, I'm not plugging them in particular. The silver came, it's real silver. And yes, uh, that was Troy ounces, obviously. That's why I screwed that up. But hey, you know. So interesting story on my silver background. All the silver that I have to date is junk silver. It is silver that we all know because it existed as silver from the time it was minted. So halves and quarters and dimes back when they were silver. Those are, those are what I have a supply of, that and copper pennies. I'm only now just getting into the more bullion side, like the silver eagles and the silver bullion chunks of silver. So we'll see how that goes. I'm open-minded, I'm, I'm positive to the idea that I'm, I'm still buying it cheaper than where I think it's going to be. And I have no problem sitting on this stuff. It, it, can go live in my safe and can live there for years until I'm ready to actually sell it or want to sell it or do whatever. Just, you know, if I'm interested in play the market at that particular time. Everything is fire ass. What kind of engineer are you? Did you get your bachelor's degree or did you keep going after that? I'm thinking about going back to school in parentheses. I'm 28 years old to try to, to try out mechanical engineering. I'd really have to jump into Khan Academy to resharpen my math skills though. So I don't know what Khan Academy is. You used a capital K in that, so I'm assuming it's a thing. I went to college for computer information systems, and so that is a computer engineer type of thing, a software engineer background. And I got a job, I interned for a year basically, my entire senior year, at a very large aerospace company and they paid for my last year of college. I went straight to work for them as a software engineer and I spent seven, eight years just doing software engineering. And when I say just doing software engineering, it's still full life cycle software engineering. What that means specifically is that you take requirements, you design the software, you code the software, and you test the software, and when I say test, I mean in, in an integration level, in a lab, in an actual environment in which it would be applied and deployed to the user, and there's varying degrees of that, and then you support it via patches and updates throughout the life cycle of the software. I did that for eight or so years, and I diverged my engineering path to go a little bit broader. So software, there's nothing wrong with software. Software is the wave of the future. But I wanted to go a little bit wider, and so I went into something that was called systems engineering. And systems engineering is higher level track of engineering where you take the requirements, and the requirements aren't for just software. It's usually for a system of some kind, like a satellite, for example. And that includes a hardware and a software development side, and all those things you're kind of in charge of integrating. So in my subsequent years, I've spent more time at a higher level of de designing systems and then verifying those systems based off of the requirements which we employed people to build solutions for. If you had a satellite you wanted to build, deploy, put into space, and then have something to talk to it, a ground station, I'd be involved in that whole baking that thing into a real deal. And it didn't really matter what it was, and it doesn't even really matter what it's brokering information on. That's what I do today. That's what I do. So I am 33 years old. I've been in this particular area that I'm at since I got out of college in 2004, and I am trying to further my education. Have I started? No. Will I continue it? Yes. And it's a very interesting kind of world right now. A couple of years ago, if you asked me what I would want to do, I, told, I would tell you I wanted to get my MBA. Now I am at a point where I'm thinking about getting just a, a, a master's in a particular technical track of engineering. And there are a couple reasons for that. One, the MBA 
in my opinion, is getting a connotation, particularly in the engineering world, that it is for someone who wants to just be an entrepreneur or someone who wants to get out of engineering and get into this whole dot-com world or do a startup or do this, that, and the other. And there are large engineering companies that are actually recoiling a bit from supporting that as a track to go forward on. Does that mean it's any less useful? No, it's still a useful track. It just depends on what your mindset is and where you want to go in the future. A engineering master's degree will always be valuable because it's just going to show more competence in that particular area, at least that's the idea. In regards to mechanical engineering, I do not have a background in mechanical engineering and I don't work with a lot of mechanical engineers. I work with electrical engineers. We call them double E's. I do have a friend and so this is, if there was one area where I could point is petroleum engineering, chemical engineering. They have a, a path that starts out making really good money and the sky's the limit. You can really go forward with that whole engineering track. It's a different kind of world though. That's not the engineering world that I come from. And let, let me be specific. Uh, I'll dive in a little bit more in my background. I grew up with electronics, working on electronics, knowing how to solder things, create circuits, build simple little fun deals. And then I got into ham radio, and ham radio is just an extension of that. I'd say almost if you really, really got the ham radio bug, you could be, I think, commensurate almost to a double E degree. You won't have that textbook knowledge. I appreciate that, I understand that, and I don't want to sell those double E's short that may watch this video. But at the same time, some of the, the most serious people that I know, the most well-versed and well-understood people that you want to work with are radio guys. Because they can both speak really well, right? And they can communicate what they're doing. So anyway, I appreciate the questions. As always, Twitter, Facebook, the comments on this video. I pay attention, I listen, I record them, I've got them right here. I'll talk to you. You just got to throw the questions at me and I'm happy to answer them. It can be about anything. Anything you see me in these videos, throw it out there. Very active in the comments and want to engage with you guys. So if you're seeing this for the first time, please hit the subscribe button. I appreciate that. And everybody that's watching, I appreciate you because you've been watching for the last, what, almost 60 days now? Is this the 60th? I think this might be the 60th episode. The vlogs have been interesting. I I've learned a lot about myself and the way I use my time. And it has changed my lifestyle in a big way. And I, I'm thoroughly enjoying it and I'm having a really good time. So the more you guys are engaged with that, the more I'm incentivized to, to continue because it's it's just, it's fun. So hopefully you're, you're there with me and we, we keep going together. I appreciate everything. Thank you very much. Have a great day. And before I forget, I did a live chat recently with gun websites on gunchannels.com. You should go check that out. It's on lockpicking. I'll post the link and you can go see it. All right. Thanks a lot.